various lenses. One paradigm is win-lose, which is oftentimes how we're conditioned. We feel like, have you ever found it hard to be happy for the success of a, another person, especially a close friend or a brother or sister? Sometimes that's hard because we feel like if they succeed and get a big piece of the success pie, there's, a left, there's less for me, a smaller piece for me. But that's not the case. Life is like an all-you-can-eat buffet. There's plenty and more to spare for everybody. Win-lose is like the story I heard once about two guys that were walking through a forest and they saw a grizzly bear and they backed off slowly but then the grizzly bears charged and they took off running and they had about 25 yards of this grizzly bear and they were trucking and one looked over to the other and said hey guess what what I just realized something what's that I don't need to outrun the grizzly bear I just need to outrun you <laughs> okay? Win lose. Lose win is like this. A young lady came to me and said, I'm very unhappy. I said, why? She goes, because people always step on me. They always get their way with me. My parents walk all over me. Everybody walks all over me. I said, well, why do you let them do that? I'm just a peacemaker. I'm just trying to make things better. And I said, you know what? You're practicing lose win. Lose win is weak too doesn't mean you have to step on other people like win-lose, but you don't have to be a doormat either. So that's called lose-win. Lose-lose is when you say, hey, if I'm going down, you're going down with me, sucker. <laughs> if I can't have him, neither will you. That's lose-lose. Win-win is the best alternative. You're always looking for solutions where you can both win. You don't care if they win, because you're going to win too. Quick example, who likes basketball? Okay, it's a big sport here in the Philippines, isn't it? I have a good friend, Dawn. And she and her best friend played together on the basketball team. This is out in the States, in Utah. And they were both very good. And Dawn started getting a lot of attention because she was playing so well. And so Pam, her best friend, got jealous. She started thinking win-lose. So she stopped passing the ball to Dawn in the games. And it got to the point where they wouldn't even talk to each other because they had this, this immense tension between them. So Dawn was upset and she went to her dad and said, Dad, my best friend Pam is now my enemy. I can't stand her. She, she won't share the ball with me. She's jealous of me. What should I do? And her dad said, here's what you do. The next game, every time you get the ball, pass it to her. What do you mean? Just pass her the ball the whole game. And not shoot? Yeah. Just watch what happens. Dad, you're so stupid. <laughs> Next game, she had no intention of doing that. Next game comes, she gets the ball, starts dribbling down the court. Her dad's up in the stands at the very top, and he yells out, Give her the ball! She rolls her eyes and goes, Ugh. throws it to Pam. Pam is surprised, gets the ball, shoots, hits two points. And Pam, or Don said, as she backed down the court, to play defense. She said, I felt a feeling I hadn't felt in years. Happiness for the success of another person. And it felt great. The rest of the game, every time she got the ball, she just fed it. Boom, boom to Pam. Pam had a great game, scored all these points. Suddenly the tension was gone. All it takes to think win-win is for one person to start to do it. Guess what happened the next game? Pam started sharing the ball with Don. The tension left. They played great together, had a great year, won most of their games. At the end of the year, there was an article written up, about, written up about how well they worked together as a team in a big paper. That's what it means to think win-win. Everyone can succeed, okay? I'm not saying competition doesn't have a place. It does in sports and life in different areas, okay? But not comparing yourself or competing with another person is where it shouldn't go. That's what it means to to think win-win. So, let me talk a little bit more about this. Public victory, our habits four, five, and six. And one of the great things you can think about is the contributions you can make to other people. I wish I could relive high school. I was a decent kid. I wasn't mean. 
But I also didn't go out of my way very much to help people in need, and I could have. There was one kid on the football team that never played named Mike. And I was nice to him, but I never really went and sat by him and said, Hey, Mike, how are things going? What can I do to help you? I could have done so much more to have been a good friend. I wish so bad I could relive high school. There's so much pain and suffering going on all over the place. And if you're looking for it, you'll see it and you'll help people. When we moved from one area to another, my daughter Rachel, I, I told you a story about before, it was a really hard move for her. She lost all of her friends. And she came home one time and she was really upset. I said, what's the matter? And she said, well, at lunch today, nobody would sit by me. I couldn't find anyone to sit with. I didn't want to sit alone because I felt stupid, so I went and I, I went to the bathroom and I ate in the stall. And I felt so bad and I, I thought to myself, you know what, there's so much need out there. And if you're looking for it, you'll find people you can help. A couple years ago, I was at Hilliard Darby High School in Ohio. And there they have a really ethnic mix. They have a lot of blacks, whites, Hispanics, and Asians, all in the same school. And unlike the Philippines, they don't mix as well as you guys do, where I don't feel any prejudice here. But there, there was a lot of prejudice. and People wouldn't talk to each other. They'd kind of sit in their cliques together. So this teacher said, we're going to have a mix-it-up day where we get everyone together, we're going to have food, and we're going to talk, and the goal is to go and get to know three or four people from another group. So, they had this mix-it-up day, it was going well, and um, <clears throat> there was this young lady who uh, was from Somalia, and she went up to the jocks, these were the athletes, that were kind of their own clique, and she said, hey, nice to meet you, how come you call us smelly Somalians? She was with a group of Somalian kids. And he said, because you are, why don't you just go back to your own country where you belong? And she looked at him and she said, do you realize that when I left Somalia, all of my family was shot right in front of me for attempting to leave by drug lords? And myself and my brother and my cousin, the three of us were the only people to escape and everyone else was killed. Do you realize how happy and grateful we are to be in America where we're free? this oppression, these drug lords, and he felt really stupid and he said, no, I, I didn't realize that. And that was the start of breaking down these prejudices and these barriers. There are so many people that are hurting in different ways. And if you're on the lookout for people that need, maybe something bad happened in their home, maybe their parents just went through a divorce, maybe they, they're new, just moved, maybe something bad happened in their life, if you're looking for it, there's so many ways you can help. I'm just going to show you a little um, touching film. This is about an autistic kid. Autism, um, you probably know a little bit about it, but these autistic kids, they're in many ways brilliant, but in many ways socially they have a hard time coping. So this is a little video about a kid that's a basketball player. He's the water boy. He's autistic, really bad autis autism. And he's the water boy for the basketball team. He gives them towels and gives them water. He never gets to play in the game because he's just not that coordinated. But the last game of the year, the coach decides to suit him up. And they get ahead in the game, and so they put him in with about two minutes left to play. And the whole school is watching, and they're so excited to see this kid get out there and play. And he gets in the last two minutes, and I want, you to, I want to show you what happens. Now, I got, this, I got this off the internet, so it's a really, the um, resolution is really bad. So you might have a hard time following it. But just kind of watch what happens and uh, to this kid, this autistic kid that gets put into this game, all right?